The story of Hadi Chopin is the story of a poor boy from a small village in Iran who after 20 years of perseverance has become an idol for the country. But the turbulent trajectory of the recent champion cannot be understood without delving into the deep roots of the Iranian people, heirs to the vast Persian Empire, a warrior people that came to have under its rule a quarter of the world's population at the time. The first dynasty of the Persian Empire was created by the Achaemenids, established by Cyrus II the Great. The Persians dominated almost half the world thanks to their warrior roots. The 10,000 immortals were known to be elite warriors with strong and rigid training. The Achaemenid Persians expanded their dominance throughout ancient Mesopotamia, reaching as far as Egypt. Much of what we know of these elite warriors comes from the historian Herodotus, who spoke of the immortal Persian as a man conscious of the greatness of his people with a strong sense of duty and loyalty to his countrymen. Javi Chopin was born in 1987, one year before the end of the Iran-Iraq War. Senior leaders presented this war to Iran as a glorious jihad and a test of national character, for which the Iranian regime made a policy of total war and tried to mobilize the entire nation for the fight. The conflict aggravated the situation of the Iranian economy, which had already been declining since the revolution of 1978, and as a result of the war, living standards fell drastically in Iran in the 1980s. In this context, a young Javi Chopin, only 10 years old, began to work with his brother Hassan. It was precisely Hassan who insisted that his younger brother go to the gym despite the economic efforts this entailed. At this stage of his adolescence, Javi also practiced boxing. Because of this stage, many came to think that Javi's hearing problems were due to a blow. However, Chopin himself made it clear that what he has is a genetic hearing problem. For those who do not know, Chopin has very limited hearing, to the point that his hearing problem causes him serious difficulties in communicating on a daily basis. And he clarifies that this is due to a genetic problem that other of his relatives also have this hearing loss. However, despite this being a serious inconvenience for Chopin's daily life, he later affirmed that he never considered this a weakness, but accepted it as part of life. Javi Chopin, despite the fact that he was always working, managed to develop an interest in bodybuilding that began in the year 2 the age of 13. At first, Javi's short stature and small size resulted in jokes and rejection from his friends and family. But Javi quit boxing at the age of 18 and with the support of his brother became an aspiring bodybuilder. And so it is that just three years later, at the age of 21, he is crowned champion of his home province of Fars and achieves a third place in a nationwide competition. But time goes by and with it Javi achieves a very outstanding evolution. So much so that he became champion of his native province of Fars and then won his first Iranian title in the year 2005. Between the year 2008 and 2013, Javi competed without any coach, but this did not prevent him from winning titles at the national level, in addition to the silver medal at the WBPF World Bodybuilding Championships. In 2013, she started working with coach Aline Mati, under whose tutelage she entered the professional world. That same year, he won first place in the WBPF Asian Championships and then competed exclusively in the World Championships where he was proclaimed champion in 2013, 2014, and 2015. But Javi needed to go a step further, and for that he needed to become a professional. For this reason, Javi traveled to Russia to compete in the Olympia Amateur where a professional card was at stake that would open the way to elite bodybuilding, and who knows if someday he might dream of stepping on the stage of Mr. Olympia. Yeah. Finally, the Iranian bodybuilder would get his pro card. 
but this was nothing compared to all the potential that his physique really had. It had been many years of previous effort, but really his competitive odyssey was still about to begin. Odisea competitiva todavía estaba a punto de comenzar. I believe he will be, he's already a star, he's a superstar, and, and, and you know, I love to see what his country, Iran, how much they backing him up. He got his own statue, I mean, it's unbelievable. Hopefully he makes it to the U.S. Because if he makes it to the U.S., I believe he will be a great fight with all these guys. Not missing anything, complete balance, thick, wide, triated, dry. I'm assuming this will see the best ever. It was clear that Javi Chopin was an imminent bodybuilding promise. Many trainers could already detect his potential. But if Javi's career has been characterized by anything, it has been by encountering multiple setbacks and obstacles along the way. He knew that if he wanted to reach the pinnacle of his professional bodybuilding career, he would necessarily have to have access to the United States, a country that is at odds with his native Iran. The adoption by the United States of restrictive measures for immigrants from some Muslim-majority countries, including Iran, negatively affects the natural continuation of Chopin's career, which was called to the definitive leap in quality. But there is no doubt that this does not eliminate Chopin's ambition to compete again in top-level championships, such as the Asian Grand Prix, where he faced none other than the king of category Tutu Antum, Flex Lewis. In this fierce battle, Javi came in second place, but with a lot of controversy, being for many the real winner of that competition in II Dozin. Such is the level of the challenges that Javi sets himself, that he enters the San Marino Pro, but in the open category. Surely you can recognize several familiar faces, such as Brandon Curry, the late Cedric McMillan, or the Brazilian Brandao. And Javi did not just go to this championship, he was selected to make a two against two against the winner of that championship, Cedric McMillan, Javi being in second place, but let's remember that we are talking about a championship in the open category coming from the Tuai Tuzi Pounds. Ah! 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 And after those two consecutive silver medals, the two night knife category did seem to be Javi Chopin's year. He presented himself at the where he swept the rest of the competitors. We also see him in the Portugal Pro, category Dan Tutuan, next to one of our countrymen, Angel Calderon. Undoubtedly, this was being the year of Javi Chopin. In category Dan Tutuan, he had no rival. Now he was qualified for the Mr. Olympia. But if it had not been enough to make it in the second Doud category, the Wolf of Persia decided to present Javi Chopin in the category to present himself to a professional championship in the open category showing one of his best versions and best point, and just let you enjoy the spectacle of bodybuilding. Javi presented himself at the Vancouver Pro in Canada, in the open category, being a two-tooth pounds. And the reason was that from Canada, there were more possibilities that he and his trainer, Hanny Rambeau, would be able to enter the United States to compete in the Mr. Olympia in his category. But what many could not know is that in the Premier Open division, Javi Chopin would show an absolutely unbeatable version. Number 
your runner-up. That award is going to go to number 20, Nathan B. Lobo de Persia gana su primer campeonato en Open y ahora tendría acceso al Mister Olimpia en ambas categorías. Hadi Chopin had managed to reaffirm how far his work ethic can take him. His perseverance would now have a destiny with a name of its own called Mr. Olympia. The consistency and discipline that got him this far could not be lacking for what was now going to be the biggest challenge of his entire bodybuilding career. Hadi Chopin's destiny seemed doomed to never land in the United States. For four years, he had been trying to make it without ever getting that visa. So his entire team, along with his trainer, Hani Rambo, had a lot of work ahead of them if they wanted the Wolf of Persia to participate in the Olympia he had earned. On a plane, getting ready to land, and we've had a complete media blackout where we have not talked to anybody. There's only a couple people in the world that knows that Hadi did get his visa and we got him to board a plane possible so that we can prepare for the 2019 Mr. Olympia competition. The question is, 212 or open? Oh, uh, we're gonna decide that later. No. CISO through a sports visa for Iranian bodybuilders is very complicated because bodybuilding is not considered a sport as such especially in the case of internationals with the United States. Yeah, I know, I'm, I'm his sponsor, his, vi his visa, I'm his trainer, and I'm also the, his sponsor for where it says on his visa, it says Evigen. I'm the owner of the company that sponsored the visa, and I'm literally right outside the door if you need me to come here. Death, and he's also business team. Okay, and I'm sorry, we'll be just, um, do you know about how much longer? Because we're going to leave him out front. Just, if you can... Oh, perfect, thank you so much. But finally, after much uncertainty, Hadi manages to enter the United States for the first time and meets with his trainer, Hanny Rambo. This guy that filled out all of the paperwork and did everything with everybody back in Dubai and everything else, my right hand man, um, everybody, you know, a lot of sleepless nights that we had to do this. And we got this guy, I'm like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm like <laughs> But there were only 14 days left until the Mr. Olympia, and there was no time to take a break. Honey, Rambo and Chopin set to work to get to the Mr. Olympia of the year in the best shape possible. But at that point, there was still one unknown in the air, which was in which category Hadi would perform at the show in Las Vegas. Remember that he was qualified for both Open and Mr. Olympia and could only choose one. We just got to Las Vegas. It's Wednesday, so two days before the Mr. Olympia competition. We just landed. Myself, Hadi Chopin, his first time in the United States, and he is doing the open class. Yeah, but this was the story of the year regarding Hadi. Chopin finally appeared in the open category. With an indescribable feeling of satisfaction on his face, simply for the fact of stepping on a stage that had been so complicated for him. 
the difference in the graininess of the skin? Yeah. Very thin. He showed up on time and he looks very complete and in shape. He's gonna he's gonna wreak havoc on some of these guys if they took this preparation lightly. Hadi chupin has been dreaming of this moment. He represents the entire nation of Iran, the Persian wolf. Short in stature, maybe five six on a good day, but as you can see, oh wow. Hadi Chopin comes in third place in his debut at the Mr. Olympia and shows absolute respect for Dexter Jackson. But that day, Hadi also became the people's champion. And considering how important it is for Joe Waiter's industry to have a product to sell and to have numbers on social media, Hadi Chopin showed up not knowing a lick of English coming from a foreign country, but with a story behind him that would end up thrilling fans. This medal is for the people everywhere around the world that support me. I love and appreciate all of you and just know that, that I actually compete for the brotherhood and the friendship of everything and I love the sport. Excellent. Now, I know that it was tough to get here to the United States. It came down to like the last week or two weeks, right, Hanny? Two weeks, two weeks. I mean, literally, at about 15 days out, we got the acceptance of the, on, the, on the visa. What was going through your mind, Hardy? Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, honestly, we just talked about this this afternoon. He thought it was about a 90% chance he wasn't coming again this year. So, you know, again, how much did that affect training? How much did it affect morale? How much did it affect focus? There was a lot of that this Olympia with a couple of contenders. Yeah. But at the end of the day, there was very, you know, when we were doing Vancouver, we had a we had a Canadian visa. So the focus was there 100%. And then when this happened, it was literally within 24 hours, he was on a plane on a way to come to California to the San Francisco. So we got him out on a plane, start training within a day. So it was all a whirlwind. He packed a bag, it was time to go. And with such a great post at Mr. Olympia, inevitably many people asked him why he didn't settle in the United States and avoid having these visa problems. And when this happened, Hadi burst into tears and explained that Iran is his life, that he cannot conceive of a life away from what is his and his people. <laughs> And so, new year, new visa problems, but new goals. And his brother Mady, this guy's an amazing job. Already here. <laughs> and Hadi Chopin enters the country again but at the last minute and very close to not competing in his second Mr. Olympia. <laughs> However, this does not end up being the best Mr. Olympia for Hadi Chopin. With the incursion of Phil Heath and Big Ramey, he was relegated to fourth place, worsening his position of last year, but without doubting at any time of his potential and ready for another year to put all the necessary work. There's two facets to being a champion. One is to be the people's champion, the other one is to, be, to get the winnings. The first and foremost that means the most to him is actually being the people's champion because that lives forever in everyone's hearts. The medal will always be in a collection and it goes there. No one's gonna be able to see it other than him, but to be the people's champion is what means the most to him. To say is that I don't want anybody to think that this is the best of me today because the best is yet to come. And after this result, one could only expect from Hadi a year of long training sessions to face the preparation of his third Mr. Olympia without any limits, because he was fully aware that his physique was worthy of the greatest recognition in bodybuilding.
Hadi jumps onto the stage of the Mr. Olympia in a condition, those that are so hard to see in modern bodybuilding. The people's champion could very well be crowned this year as the new Mr. Olympia. As the new Mr. Olympia. And the sign of Hadi is the sign of someone who feels that he has missed a Mr. Olympia who could have been perfectly eligible for it. We arrived at last year's Mr. Olympia. The look that Hadi Chopin brings is spectacular. New competitors appear on the battle line. Tarek Lansford coming from the Vodi Thui, Samson Dauda, an unexpected incursion, Nick Walker advancing positions, and we have with us a very interesting Mr. Olympia, but of all of them, the one who showed the best condition was Hadi Chopin. In a bodybuilding lacking the definition seen in the past, Hadi seemed to be the only one who could bring the skin. In that already so unusual condition, and this together with the rest of his virtues, could give him what would be his greatest dream, his first Mr. Olympia. And this is how Hadi, a man who comes from the bottom, multiple inconveniences with the visa, without being the media bodybuilder profile you might expect, makes history and is Mr. Olympia. And the best part of all this is that Hadi, after having achieved everything, dares to make a speech that will go down in history and could also change his life. <laughs> I would like to replay this championship and get the Sando again next year. And also I want to give this championship to Iranian women and for their freedom. And I would like we tell everyone in the world that to we all human and we are no racism. We are all the same. And I want to thank all people of the whole in the world and especially the Iranian woman, so freedom to Iran. And so it is that Hadi Chopin, at the height of his career, dares to deliver a speech of freedom that is not just any speech of freedom. Let's remember that he says these words in a context where a soccer player had been convicted, where there are thousands of arrests and where there are very serious problems. And as I always say, sometimes it is better to judge a speech by what is lost when it is delivered rather than by what is gained. And in this case, Chopin had much more to lose than to gain. Let us remember his words that he does not conceive of a future outside his country, outside Iran. Iran, 
a region of the world, so historic in the cradle of civilization, a country that has gone through such diverse realities throughout its history, and that today is one of the regions that produces the most bodybuilders to the world. And among them was our dear Hadi Chopin, who even with everything to lose, clamors for freedom for the women of his country. Women who are really exposed to the repression of basic freedoms. Nothing to compare with the situations that we can live here in the West. In addition, when we talk about Iran, we tend to generalize by referring to it as to the Arab countries in general, when in Iran there are many different religions, with totally different customs, and one of these minority religions is the one that Hadi Chopin processes, the Zoroastrianism, known as the first monotheistic religion of the world, an unexplored culture here in the West, but beyond the beliefs and religious diversity of each one, if there is no doubt about anything, is that Chopin is one of those people dedicated to his people, one of those people who transmits a message of trying despite any barrier that life puts in your way, and in the end a worthy example for so many fanatics. And taking into account the importance for the Mr. Olympia industry, having a product to sell, that marketing and networks that is so much talked about, to set yourself up as a charismatic figure, it was clear that Chopin, on paper, was not aiming to become that figure, but I believe that his story has ended up speaking for itself, and that personally, he is one of those champions who has earned it more than any other. And this has been the story of Hadi Chopin, I hope you liked it. The best way with which you can support this type of content if you want me to keep bringing it is by leaving a comment the one you want of any kind. Giving it a like, subscribing to stay tuned to the channel, following me on my social networks, which is none other than Instagram, which I leave it all for you here in the comment set. And gentlemen, that said, I hope you liked it. Greetings and see you in the next video.